Hi and happy Halloween from me and Sky. It's our favourite holiday of the year and it's the end of our seven days of horror. This is the final episode. We, we made it. enjoying so far. We can't believe we did it, to be honest. <laughs> I'm very um, proud of we're us. We're going to celebrate by talking about horror movie sequels. This is something we've done before, but it didn't see the light of day. It's something me and Sky are really interested in. We've talked about quite a lot in episodes and outside of episodes you know the good and the bad honestly um I think Sky has some more to say as well well I think it's it, interesting because horror sequels are things that people don't really want to talk about because mm. they always think that they're bad um we're here to slightly disprove that theory today uh but what I want to say quickly before we start is this episode is very last minute we had an entirely different episode prepared we may have referenced it on our other episodes leading up to this I actually can't remember um if we didn't and you have no idea what it is hopefully it will be coming out as a bonus Halloween episode sometime in late November probably if not maybe we'll save it until next year we'll just have to see how it goes we've once again been put in YouTube copyright jail we can't get out of it so as we always say every bit of support that we get with this podcast really helps because it sucks so much like I know for a fact Liana has killed herself with just this one video like she's edited every video this year but just this <laughs> one video before it even went into copyright jail was a bugger to get ready and then mm. now that it's in there there's just no way for us to get it out so mm. This is last minute, but I thought it kind of made sense to revisit the horror sequels to replace what should have been our Halloween episode. I'm also, I'm definitely not happy that the episode we originally wanted to release isn't able to be released, but we were a bit bummed on that one that we kind of forgot to dress up. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know it sounds stupid, but like I think I've said throughout all these episodes that we've recorded them all out of order this mm -hmm. is the first time we've ever recorded this many and we started back in September the most prepped we've ever been for an episode was our first anniversary and that was mm -hmm. just because me and Leanna happened to actually be seeing each other in um, that month so we were like okay we'll record it now like two months before it's meant to be released yeah. so yeah this is an excuse to get a little bit more dressed up feel it a bit more Halloweeny because it's actually October as well um, and because I just said the word Halloweeny, I'm going to throw things back over to Liana now because obviously I'm speaking too much. <laughs> well, basically, I feel like as much as the the other video we really enjoyed and we wanted to put out, like you say, we weren't dressed up in it. We didn't really talk about Halloween that much in it. The film is also very much back in the zeitgeist, so I feel like it doesn't really hurt for it to not mm -hmm. be released on Halloween because this episode does feel Halloween-y we've both got some makeup slapped on we're mm -hmm. ready to go and also mm -hmm. I just get super passionate about horror movie sequels so Same. I'm ready to dive in honestly mm -hmm. have you got your notes to hand I do so there isn't one I wanted to start with exactly but I wanted to give it a mention because so when we originally recorded this, there was uh, a horror sequel I wanted to talk about. I had mentioned it to Liana on a, one of our previous episodes before. However, last year, I couldn't find it anywhere. Mm -hmm. You can't even buy it. It was impossible to find even just, I don't think I could even find video links for it. Mm -hmm. I could only find like really shitty still images. And it's the sequel to the Rocky Horror Picture Show, mm -hmm. Shock Treatment. Mm -hmm. And like I said, even now, I still can't find it. So... I, can someone just send me a copy because I really want to watch it but I can't even buy it so it's just lost There's, I mean not to like already sidetrack but you know that whole debate that's being had at the moment about like lost media because yeah. streams you know things that never made it to blu-ray or never made mm -hmm. it to dvd we might be seeing that it, it's one of those I also guarantee now somebody's going to be like you fucking idiot like it's literally on like this streaming service it's in hmv <laughs> and it's like well you know what it wasn't at the recording. At the time of recording, it's lost forever. And it upsets me because I know it's terrible. I know it has terrible reviews, but I want to see it so bad. And it's like, and maybe this just encapsulates horror sequels in general, mm. especially when they're bad. Because of that, I want to see it even more. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, of course you do. Because it's like, why is it bad? You know, you can hear that something's bad, exactly. but you want to know for yourself why. Because I'm sure there's many things that we enjoy, which people think are terrible. And mm -hmm. when it comes to sequels, I feel like you really, it's more particular, I would say, than liking the original film, because mm -hmm. sequels obviously take an element from the first film, and that element it took to focus on might not be the thing that you loved, or it might be something that someone else loved, you know? Mm -hmm. So like, I don't know, it's, you said there isn't one in particular you want to focus on to start, mm -hmm. 
I'm just going to go with like probably one of the most famous sequels of all time, and that is Nightmare on Elm Street 2. Of Let's course. Go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we have spoken about it for a long time. I was, I was going to say, we have spoken about it before. I think it crops up all the time. Like, mm. At one point, we had like these big four in our episodes that always popped up. And I think it was like The Lost Boys, The Rocky Horror Picture Show, Handmaiden. The Handmaiden. And I can't remember what the fourth one was. Oh wait. was one. oh, wait, was it this? Perhaps. Jennifer's. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. I think it, I think it was, <laughs> I think it was the, the, uh, when that ran on Street Part Two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, and like as time's like gone on, wait, that made no sense. I'm just going to start that whole bit again. <laughs> We used to have a big four. Um, <laughs> we used to have a big four that would appear in like all of our episodes. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Part Two, I think, was a big one, and then it just like kind of got into what we probably mention it more than I actually realize because okay. I said I don't edit the the episodes. Liana does, so she'll know better than I do. But you are. We could just go on and on and on talking about it's it. Really good. We just we have to mention it because like, how can you talk about sequels and not bring it up? Mm-hmm. You know, because I feel like that's such a classic example of where a lot of horror franchises go wrong. They take an element of the original film, like I say, and then they run with it. But it's not necessarily the element people loved. So people loved Nancy from the first Nightmare on Elm Street. And what did they do? They just picked a new kid. Yeah. And like, he's all right, but he's not exactly that. In- he's, in- he's just not as interesting as Nancy, you know? Mm-hmm. And what was interesting about that first film was the relationship between nancy and freddie you know like the back and forth and like their spats and fights and stuff and what's really cool then is when you get to the third night on elm street where's craven got back involved and he brings her back because obviously he paid more attention to the audience and the fans he always paid attention to his fans and he knew Mm -hmm. they loved nancy so he figured out a way to bring her back without just repeating the first film and i think that's when a sequel is good you know i think we've said before that like I think I also might have just actually confused the third one for the sequel for a long, long mm-hmm. time. Like, I don't remember. It must have been you, Liana, who, like, I couldn't remember who lent me the Elm Street franchise, but it, like I said, it, it, it must have <laughs> been you. And yeah, I think I always remembered the third one as the sequel. And then when we decided to include it in our first ever Halloween special for the podcast and our Gays and Ghouls episode... I felt like I was watching it for the first time, even though I know I'd definitely seen it before because mm. it feels like it feels like maybe like the fifth or sixth one. Like it doesn't feel like it should have been the second one. Not that I didn't enjoy oh, yeah, it. I it's just I guess with how well the third one flows with yeah. kind of the original, it did feel really out of place. No, I agree. I think like that second one feels so detached in comparison to then going and watching the third one and it feeling better connected to the first one that you just mm-hmm. think like what happened there mm. like as soon as you know it was Wes Craven's involvement then it makes complete sense doesn't it but like yeah. I know you enjoy them but the mm-hmm. later films in the franchise like they're just not my god oh they're the trash yeah. uh, a friend at work's like watching them at the moment mm-hmm. and like I can't remember which one they said that they were on but I was just saying like they're gonna get shit they're gonna get so shit and I was like and when you watch Freddy's Dead even though I'm pretty sure it's like the one just before the last one you're gonna want to quit I was like but don't because it all pays off in the end. Yeah. And I'm not saying that you have to watch them all to appreciate mm. New Nightmare. Like, if anything, maybe just watch the first and the third one to really appreciate New Nightmare. Well, even but, watch the second one as well, just to get well, an idea yeah. of, like, the franchise, you know? But, yeah, they... But I can't help it. And I guess mm. this is where, like, my... Maybe I don't really have a valid point when it comes to horror sequels. Like, if I say a horror sequel is bad, what does that mean? Because I genuinely <laughs> love all of the Nightmare on Elm Street films. I don't think that they're good films, all of mm-hmm. them. Some, some of them definitely are. Mm-hmm. I don't think they're all good. There's just something about them mm-hmm. that I just feel like I'm glad every single one of them was made. There, I said it. I feel like they have more going for them than, say, like Friday the 13th and Halloween films, though, because yes. those just get so stupid. Like, I'm not mm-hmm. saying the Nightmare on Elm Street ones don't, but I will watch those, and I just, like, I I won't put myself through the Halloween and Friday the 13th. I think it's yeah. because the Nightmare on Elm Street films started stupid. No matter how scary yeah, they absolutely. actually were and how, like, well-made they were, they yeah. were stupid from the beginning. So when mm-hmm. they started to really not take themselves seriously... Nobody was really surprised. No, of course not. It just Whereas, gradually amped up over time, didn't it? Exactly. Whereas of all, like you said, with like Friday the 13th and 
ha- Halloween especially. I mean, I haven't yeah, even seen... It kind seen... of destroys the whole point of Michael, really. Exactly. I haven't even seen the most recent one because I think I've said before, big taboo for a horror fan probably, but Halloween is not, it's not my favourite yeah, yeah. Like, thing. Um, the holiday, yeah, the films, no. <laughs> so I haven't actually seen any of the new ones. The only new ones I've seen were Rob Zombie's remakes. Um, and that's, that's like the last time I was ever involved in that universe (laughs) but obviously I am on social media so I've seen people just say how severely disappointing it was for that to be the conclusion of like decades decades of Mm build-up well consider as well that the um, the reboot or re whatever you want to call it requel Mm -hmm. whatever that was so good I genuinely Mm -hmm. really enjoyed that some people said it was shit or they say it was shit no when it came out, I remember it being really loved. It was only like, what what was it, like 2017, 18? I remember the reaction being quite positive. And it's like people were suddenly turning around and pretending, oh, no, I never liked it because the other films in the trilogy are shit. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, I know you definitely gave that a higher review on Letterboxd when it came out. You're pretending yeah. that you were wise and so fancy and you didn't enjoy it. It's like, loads of us did because it was a pleasant little retconning of like the other films you know it didn't say Mm -hmm. like oh they don't matter it just kind of like got back to the original idea of Michael you know Mm -hmm. it was so good I really enjoyed like how it still kind of referenced those films and didn't act like they didn't exist you know them that line in the Halloween requel that's like oh wasn't he her brother and then the granddaughter was like no that was just a rumor and it was that's amazing (laughs) I I love it when like a franchise will do that and pay attention to the other films instead of completely disregard them and I I think this is like a good segue into kind of like there's nothing wrong with liking like bad horror movies Mm -hmm. and like even bad horror sequels like I think this is the other thing like it's nice to see people hmm, I was gonna say it's nice to see people not taking themselves too seriously anymore but I actually think we're regressing quite a bit like we've spoken Mm. about before how the film community is just getting way too intense right now and the horror film community is one of the worst for gatekeeping yeah it's like you know if you don't like this or you don't like that then how can you call yourself a horror fan it's Mm. just like shut up that's something I really loved though in the new screen when on the phone she was like oh elevated horror like social horror and then the guy was just like sounds boring (laughs) yep (laughs) that was great because it just it's true though like I know it was like a joke, but it, it was a really good way of showing like how horror kind of is branching into like these little communities, which all think they're better than each other. You know, mm-hmm. you have that classic horror crowd and then you have the crowd which are really into all the franchises, you know, like the big three. Then mm-hmm. you have the crowd that are really into the camp stuff and then you have the crowd that are really into others. And it's like, they all kind of like resent each other, but it's like, no one's like, no one's arguing. Like just enjoy I know. Them, enjoy. <laughs> Literally though. It's like, I, I don't understand it at all. It's like, let's all just enjoy Halloween let's all enjoy watching Nightmare on Elm Street and chill honestly mm-hmm. I don't even, if you're, even if your shit's like watching fucking Coraline it's fine <laughs> yeah. like it doesn't matter there's so much diff- like honestly I just rewatched Coraline even the other night and I was like this mm. is so fucked up yeah. it's so fucked up like okay yeah it's marketed at kids that doesn't make it okay yeah you know, I mean, there are so many, this isn't even the point I'm trying to make with today's episode, but there are so many levels to horror and horror yeah. sequels is a part of it, whether you like it or not. Yeah, and there are some good ones that I feel like have gotten like really bad reputations simply because they were sequels. Mm-hmm. Like one example I can think of right now is Hellraiser 2. Mm. Like I looked up, I can't remember when, it must have been last year, I guess, but I looked up like the worst horror movie sequels and hellraiser 2 was on there but some but, people think that's one of the best so it's all but, subjective right this is what i mean though like but so many sites said i mean i'm not saying obviously this is like conclusive evidence but so many sites said that hellraiser 2 was a bad sequel and at that point i hadn't watched it and then when i did watch it i, I really like, so i really didn't get it because mm. comparing it to other horror sequels it was a good film comparing it to the first one it was a good film like it continued the storyline like it really felt like it just like great great double feature like mm. watching one after That's the other what which I always is what I did. say is you don't really need to watch the rest but like the first two you kind of can like back to back double feature them mm-hmm. To me, that makes a good sequel. Like, a sequel doesn't need to be setting up for an entire franchise. I think that's where a lot fuck up now. 
Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like those ones which just act like a sequel to that first film and like could literally just be another bookend. Those are some of the best, you know, like um, it's when they try and set up too much, it gets a bit silly. One of my favourite examples of it just being two films and the second one being a brilliant compliment is Gremlins 2. Like, yes. Come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so fucking true. Like it, there doesn't need to be any more. I don't think there ever should be or will be. It's just mm-hmm. like Gremlins 2 just takes things from the first one and expands upon them and mocks them and part mm-hmm. of that is that the director came back like do you know the story of gremlins 2 no i don't actually have you ever seen it yeah of course I have. Oh, okay so like basically <laughs> joe dante made it obviously a massive success considered a christmas film and a horror film so like immediately iconic mm-hmm. um and what happened was he was chased by the studio for ages saying we want another one we want another one he just didn't want to do it because they actually made up a lot of the special effects when they made that film like on the fly as they were doing it so they had to like make the technology. He was done with it, didn't want anything. But then they came back to him literally years later and offered him carte blanche or blanc, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. And I mean, for a director, especially in that time period with big studio money, like how could you say no? Mm-hmm. So he literally just went ham. He, and he, to this day, he calls it his most personal film. Well, it, it, it paid <laughs> off. Like yeah. you can see, I guess it's a really interesting point because even like you brought it up with the um, Nightmare on Elm Street sequels is that, a lot of the problems come from when directors change, mm. like more than anything when directors change, because then it starts to feel like a cash grab, which yeah. even if a sequel's good, most of the time it is. Mm. I mean, at the end of the day, like stuff getting released, you know, mm-hmm. people want to make money from it. Um, but yeah, I think when obviously directors bail, it's it. I guess it's kind of a shame because especially if you know going into it beforehand, you're like, did they want this? Mm kind of makes it a bit sad you know mm, i agree i mean like not just the um, the directors though but also the writers mm-hmm. i feel like the writers are a massive part because i guess that's why scream did so well like kevin williamson came back to write mm-hmm. them and that's why there's that very like consistent you know dialogue and like tones to it you know and mm-hmm. i think you feel that too in gremlins too and you feel it in say like uh chucky films by the time mm-hmm. you get to say like bride of chucky it has that same like campness or it yeah. elevates the campness if anything you know what mm-hmm. do i mean if anything it definitely did and um say dawn of the dead if you count that as a sequel mm-hmm. i don't really think it is it's like a thematic sequel but it works because it's george a romero again you know mm-hmm. it's when these filmmakers come back and revisit the same things they work so well and i will touch on all of them more but one I want to mention, which is different people involved, but actually is amazing, is Aliens. Because it's contradicting everything we're saying right now. I didn't actually even know that different people were involved. I've only seen the Aliens films. I've seen the first one quite a few times. Yeah. I've only seen the second one in total. In total? <laughs> yeah. In total once. Yeah. Um, and then in parts enough that I feel like I've probably seen yeah, it twice. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I think I've watched Alien vs. Predator both one and two. And then, <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing with Aliens is it's um, James Cameron, mm-hmm. which is insane to me. You know, mm-hmm. like dude that made Aliens then goes on to make friggin' Titanic. That's that's nuts. But then you can tell because it's on this broad scope. Like that's yeah. the main point of Aliens is it's just taking the first film, making it a bigger scope, and like dude was just like, let's make like a military version of Alien. Mm-hmm. And, you know to me that sounds so stupid i'd be like Ugh, why would you want that but it just yeah. works so well with that specific villain and mm-hmm. do you know like the like i don't know if it's real it's kind of like an urban legend of how james cameron pitched the film no i don't it goes into the meeting he writes like alien on the board and then he just adds an s like aliens and that's how he pitched it Oh, that, so do you know what though goes. that like feeds into one of like just my favorite I was gonna call it a trope but it's only because I don't feel like it really gets done that much anymore mm. I guess because most most horror successful horror films now are just kind of being they're either continuations of past franchises or they are just standalones yeah that's right. um but I'm absolutely obsessed with them just adding two yeah. like either actual the number or roman numerals too like for, <laughs> like for example american psycho 2 is fucking hilarious to me because mm-hmm. first of all american psycho 2 is a fucking terrible film also psycho um, 2 what? no but you, oh my god it's like oh i can't remember what it's called but it's like that twitter account that literally like takes like screen grabs from movies and then like puts the title on it as if they said it in the film oh, and it's like like i am an american psycho 2 <laughs> 
Like, I just, I just think it's so fucking funny. It just works so much better to add something. So say like um, the purge anarchy. Mm-hmm. Don't really understand what that really adds to the title, but at least it's not the purge too. It's, that's what I mean because I feel like this is where you just like because even uh, the Nightmare on Elm Street series, which apparently is the one I'm going to use to anchor us back <laughs> to everything, they all. What did they all? Yeah, they all had they all like add-on number, names, but then they had that extra bit. I yeah, and I just love that, that though. That's yeah. so great. I, I think it's that's probably great. because we come from the era of like pop punk songs being as long as the fucking dictionary so like i just i'm just really obsessed with like the longer the title this is why when i get i got a job in social media like it fucked me up for a bit because it was like character limits what are they you know what i mean (laughs) (laughs) yeah i think i think like one of my favorite styles in like sequel titles is when you like have that through line but they're different you know uh night of the living dead dawn of the dead is it city of Mm -hmm. the living dead there's just like a few, and they just work like they just all have like of dead in them yeah and it, oh, mm-hmm. I, yeah. yeah no, no i no. i i completely agree like it's so simple but it works so well it's like i love when people were talking about how like somebody got like um 28 days later 28 weeks later and to mm-hmm. this day we are still waiting for 28 months later like i just think it's really funny it's so annoying because that works so well as well <laughs> and know. now that you know we're you know we've lived not lived through covid but living through covid mm-hmm. it, it, like people are gonna want that film more than ever you know yeah. that 28 months because i think mm-hmm. it's, been, it's been about that since you know initial mm-hmm. lockdowns and everything people are gonna go nuts over that film yeah maybe it's in the works we just don't know about well, it that it, would be it's great been, wouldn't it's, it? it's been in development hell for years mm-hmm. hasn't it there's just always been all those rumors and everything but it's like i feel like if it hasn't happened by now it shouldn't <laughs> I don't know. There's zombie yeah. fatigue at this point, isn't there? Do you know what, though? I think it's a really good example of, like you just said, about how they go about it. Because I actually still think it could... Yeah, zombie fatigue is definitely a thing. Mm. But I really do think that there is a way that they could bring it back. The it zombie def- revival. <laughs> it would have to be such a solid, tight script. Like that yeah. first film. Because like, mm-hmm. if you're going to come back now with something zombie related, I think it has to be so interesting. Yeah. Or just has such a tone to it or something like that. Because I mean, like, everyone is so done with like The Walking Dead. The yeah. Fact that they like, we're going to carry on for like 30 years. I was going to, like, yeah. <laughs> Even The Walking Dead is done with The Walking Dead. Exactly. It's so good. Yeah. I, I would love to see like um another 28 Days film because mm-hmm. that first film is incredible. And do you know what? I actually do quite enjoy 28 Weeks. Yeah, so do I. I didn't write that on my notes, honestly. I kind of forgot. I don't know. Mm. I'm I'm gonna be totally real here and like call myself out. I'm actually using my notes from last year because that's how like kind of like last minute this episode was. Yeah. Um, but that's a good point. I don't know why I didn't think about them either because I, I it's because it seems so different to the first one in a way. Yeah, like, because it's like it's very Americanized. It's bigger in scale. But then I mm. really like like that works in my head because it's like yeah. of course that's what would happen is that mm-hmm. the americans would come in and then it would all be on a bigger scale and then they'd have all the like military and stuff it's just mm-hmm. like obvious. but this is why it's like you said like where would you go from here or would you have like i don't know it all set in space which is for some reason what every horror franchise ends so up doing funny. at some point i just i think it's so interesting when it comes to sequels like do you go bigger or do you go smaller because say you go psycho 2 have you ever seen mm-hmm. it I haven't, no. Actually fucking fantastic, honest to God, because it becomes more of a character study. So it's 23 years after the original film and they purposely filmed it in Hitchcock style Mm -hmm. and it just still feels within that world and it's like Norman Bates is back and it's like he's tormented and he's trying to be a better man and all these and it's about the expectations people have of him and it just really hones in on the character and it's like, it's a proper little acting opportunity for anthony perkins you yeah know? and in the opposite way that you have aliens or you have mm-hmm. say dawn of the dead because you know you look at say night of the living dead that's a one location film essentially and mm-hmm. then dawn of the dead is one location again but on a bigger scale because it's in the mall and then that starts to talk about more about social themes and it's you know about consumerism and all and then i was actually when i was writing my notes right thinking about this idea of expanding in the second film purge anarchy funnily enough does the same thing dawn of the dead does because it the first film was a one location thing mm-hmm. purge anarchy goes outside of that one location thing to talk more about social themes i was like whoa 
Well, it's what? really funny that like you already kind of answered the question I was going to ask because I was going to say like I was like I can't think of any sequels that went on to a smaller scale, but now I really want to watch Psycho Two because I, I you again enjoy it. I did. I love yeah. it. I do very much think it's something that you will you will appreciate. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? I think that for a lot of people, I think, you know, you hear Psycho and it's not even just an iconic horror film, it's just an iconic film. It's so important in film history. Mm-hmm. People are like, oh, how could you make a sequel to that? How could you do that? I know that Psycho 3 was directed by Anthony Perkins, which blows my mind, but apparently that one is actually bonkers. So mm-hmm. I don't know if I'll pop with that <laughs> one. But Psycho 2 is like a very interesting film. I can't really think of anything to compare it to. Do you know what? You've also just brought up another really interesting point is how precious and protective people are over the originals that, again, sequels just get villainized. Of course they do, yeah. It's ridiculous. Well, they, like, it's though, because sometimes they don't. Sometimes it's the complete opposite. People just want more mm-hmm. and more. Like, look at the Purge mm-hmm. films, look at the Conjuring. I am that person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, like, I, I, I would kill to know what the reaction was to the announcement that there was going to be another Alien film. Because Alien mm-hmm. was like, it didn't really do necessarily like well when it came out, but it was so unique because it's like a pretty much like a bunch of like truckers in mm-hmm. space, you know, it's yeah. like so compact. I feel like it probably had its like ride or die fans. Mm-hmm. And then to hear, oh, there's a second one coming out with a way bigger budget, it's going to be on a bigger scale, and there's going to be a shit ton of aliens. Like, I'm so curious to know what the initial reaction was. Yeah, that's true. Mm. anybody if listening who was there tell us yeah i'm gonna have to do some <laughs> research maybe i'll have to find some newspaper clippings or something but mm-hmm. like because th- we've talked about you know expanding but i don't really know any others that expand so extremely like yeah you have 28 days but it's still in london mm-hmm. you know like it's taken over the uk but hadn't it like already taken over the uk in 28 days yeah, I'm pretty sure. Or at least yeah. that was the impression that it had given. Yeah, that's what I thought. And then, But actually, no, because if, if you think about it, 28 weeks right at the end, when they're running out and you see the Eiffel Tower, like 28, mm. we can only imagine that 28 months would have just been like absolutely bonkers. I didn't think this episode was going to make me sad that there isn't a 28 months. I didn't come mm. into this expecting to be hit with that, but now I, I am. I think about it, though, I'm like, what could have been? But I'm also, still hoping. am I kind of low-key glad that there isn't one? at the same mm. time i don't know it's got to a point where like i've i've said this before unfortunately even though i'll complain about like like sequels or mm-hmm. adaptions of stuff like ruining the because i actually don't think anything gets ruined this is my thing i think this is why i consume so much like follow-on media i mm-hmm. guess like even if i don't like it like if i have a book series that i really like and uh, a film's getting made and it's going to be trash. We all know it's going to be trash. I will still watch it and I'll probably watch it more than once as well because I don't know. I just I just love... You're able to detach it, clearly. But that's what I mean. But like, I don't think I've ever watched anything and the media itself has ruined the mm. original for me. Like, circumstances around it, possibly. Like, you know, real life impacts. Mm-hmm. But... Yeah, I don't think I've ever watched a film and seen the sequel. A really good example for me is the Lost Boys sequels. So I'm sticking to what I said. Has it ruined the original for me? Obviously, I watch it like three to five times a year. But I didn't even realise that it the Lost Boys was a trilogy yeah. until maybe a couple of years ago. And I was walking through HMV and I saw them and I was like, come again? <laughs> and at first I was really excited why I don't know maybe because like I said I am just a whore for any kind of extra media for stuff that I like mm-hmm. um but then I only watched the second one so the tribe I think it's called yeah I think I would have actually preferred if they just remade it if they just remade the original what's so bad about it yeah what's good about it <laughs> <laughs> they just I don't it it <laughs> It's so the story of it is basically like I think it came out 21 years after the original mm-hmm. first problem right yeah. um because it wasn't like it came out 21 years later and then it did say like a similar thing to what Scream did mm-hmm. is that it kind of didn't redo what was done in the original exactly but it followed a similar storyline even to an extent the craft sequel okay mm-hmm. I recently watched that. Don't think it was as bad as everybody was saying. Um, mm. But again, they followed kind of a similar vibe. So people who really liked the original could get with it. People that um, 
didn't really care and were just watching the sequel on its own could also follow a story. Mm. The Lost Boys of the Tribe tried to do a similar thing, but it was just it was just too much for me. I couldn't. <laughs> Corey Feldman's in it. He plays mm. the same character. And I mean, so I think the original premise of it was, so the thing was going to be that Sam had become a vampire mm-hmm. and I can't remember exactly what they were going to do with it, but I think it was going to be like uh, friends that become enemies kind of thing. Ooh, so that's kind I of feel like... Now. Oh, right and I feel like maybe because obviously the original does it could have had some really cool undertones and enemies to lovers maybe but anyway yeah um that didn't happen and you know obviously there was a lot going on there there was actually um an extra bit at the end where Corey Haim was in it as a vampire and that was the best bit of the whole film obviously so why because that happened did he not want to like be attached for the whole film I'm actually not sure possibly mm. obviously he had a tumultuous that's what I mean though I don't know if maybe he was able to be so they put in that like little sequel thing but I a sequel um like cameo at the end that after the credits as well um and the only reason I what I even saw it is because I was looking through um like just trivia of it and people said that he was in it and I was like what I had to skip past the credits to get to it because I didn't expect them to do it and yeah it was the best bit of the whole film and it wasn't even because you know he was in it it was because like I said, if that had been the original kind of storyline, I feel like that could have worked. I didn't watch the third one because that that film was just an example to me of how they didn't get the first one. And I think it's also really good to point out how like they were made like two decades apart and it really shows. Because, oh my God, it shows. The main appeals of The Lost Boys is its 80s mm-hmm. vibe and 80s setting. So it's just like by making it so much later you've immediately lost that already and as well these two films were made two of um during two of arguably the most iconic eras for horror which was mm. the 80s and then the noughties yeah. and they had very different vibes it did not mesh Egg of frog had catchphrases all of a sudden and oh. it just felt it almost it felt like <laughs> honestly it felt like people who like I don't know, film students who had watched the original film mm. once had not really got it, gone with kind of a vibe and it just didn't work. <laughs> it just <laughs> wasn't for me. They don't sound appealing whatsoever. No. Like not one bit of me is interested in them. But then mm. I'm like that with a lot of sequels, quite honestly. Like usually my instinct is not to watch mm-hmm. other than to consume, you know? I, I wish I had that self-preservation. I wish I did because it would have saved me from this. Also, I paid for this film. I I had to rent it. Oh, it, oh I thought you meant you bought oh, it. No, I, I actually can't decide if it would have been better or worse if I bought it because at least if I bought it, then I have something physical sure. to take my pain out on. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like really cathartically just like mm-hmm. smashed it to pieces no I'm not that I'm not that angry at it but I wasn't happy I feel like my my motto with like horror sequels has always been like I only watch it when it's specifically cited as a good one or someone recommends mm-hmm. it I would so like uh one I really want to talk about is Bride of Chucky mm-hmm. because obviously that's like one of the best sequels ever let alone mm-hmm. a horror sequel because mm-hmm. they just took things people liked about the original film and about Chucky as a character and then they didn't even like make him the focus of a sequel they literally introduced a new character get an iconic actress and they just like played with so many different ideas like Brad Dourif who you know he's Chucky mm-hmm. Oscar nominee yeah. Jennifer Tilly who voices I forget her name Tiffany mm-hmm. she's also an Oscar nominee like they just did all these fun things with it and like mm-hmm. you know kind of played with like the visual of like alt women and stuff like that and I just went fucking fantastic everything think, about that film well it is because I'm for, I feel like Bride of Chucky is like the one that everybody thinks of when they think when of they Chucky think sequels no I think when they just think of Chucky in general that's actually a very good point I think if a lot I, of people think of Chucky and like Halloween costumes they think of yeah don't they because it is great couples costumes so <laughs> as well like really like not even like romantic couples like yeah. y- you and your bestie just yes. just do it you and your fucking dog I don't know <laughs> I think it's just so iconic. I love it, honestly. Mm-hmm. I just think that it's like, if you're going to do a sequel and you want it to be fun, lean into the fun aspects of the original, you mm-hmm. know? And like, that's exactly why Bride of Chucky does really well. It's why Scream, like the sequels, yeah, some people aren't that big a fan, but the people that love the sequels love it for where it dips back into like the original, you know? So like, mm-hmm. perfect example, Scream 2. 
when you see the first stab film and they cast Tory Spelling as mm-hmm. Sydney because they mentioned it in the first film and blah 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 and every time it like kind of calls back to the original or to real life people just lap it up like another thing in Scream 2 is when they talk about Gail Weathers nudes being on the internet and she's like it was my Facebook Jennifer Aniston's body it's like they just I went for it we probably spoke about this in one of our many Scream episodes but it's also that whole idea of like even if it's not the same directors and writers, mm. there has to be the passion for it or they themselves have to be fans because it's the only way you're going to get something yeah, that isn't going to, again, even though I don't quite be- like fe- feed into this belief, tarnish mm. the memory of the yes. original. You know, especially when it's one of those films that like, I mean, pretty much all the films we're talking about mean something to somebody. Um, mm. But like, you know, these iconic films that go beyond just being really good horror films. Yeah. You know, they they like people have found like some of their best friends through them and things like that. And so that I kind of get like, you know, there are so many, I guess we're quite lucky in the sense that there are a lot of films that like are built into our friendship. Mm-hmm. But because of how we just love consuming films, sequels can't really tarnish those films because i mean here we are we're doing a whole podcast yeah, episode love, on still sequels. Love the original, no matter what, exactly you know? yeah <laughs> i think that's how you should consume sequels i, I feel like this episode's like wrapping up a little bit and like mm-hmm. one of my final points i want to make is that like watch a sequel and think of it as a sequel don't think of it as an extension of the original because if you don't enjoy it just attach like sky said she can do and then you can mm-hmm. still appreciate the original for what it is you don't have to think of it as something that adds to the canon and all for you can just revert back to the original you know mm-hmm. and just or if you prefer the sequels just enjoy the sequels you know yeah like, that's honestly that's the biggest thing i want people to take away from this if you enjoy the sequels, it's fine. Don't let anybody shame you. For th- yeah. If you prefer the sequels, that's also fine. Yeah. Like there are like even outside of horror, there are like many different film genres that obviously have sequels because people know like when it comes to media like this, we'll just keep lapping it up. So oh, they will keep 100%. producing it. So yeah, if you prefer sequels, that's absolutely fine. Yeah. That's all I want to say. <laughs> exactly. So we hope you spend this Halloween watching some great horror and some I hope you've spent October watching some great horror franchises revisiting mm-hmm. some favorites or maybe revisiting ones that you think are a bit naff either way I hope you've had fun with it we mm-hmm. really hope you've enjoyed our seven days of horror a lot of time and energy and love <laughs> went into them and we just mm-hmm. hope you enjoyed them as much as we did honestly yep and if this is the first one you're coming across definitely go back we've got mini sides we've got longer ones we've mm-hmm. got more I was gonna say family friendly ones probably not but you can give it a go we just kind of went with like a whole bunch of things this year because you know seven days of horror is something we wanted to do right from the beginning of this podcast but it just was not feasible even when we tried to do it last year we just managed to squeeze in the weekend this year despite again youtube trying to take us down we managed to do it so (laughs) i have had i have had a lot of fun it's made for me october feel like a lot more like october because basically my entire month has been consumed with things to do with this podcast so either i've been watching horror films getting ready i've been making graphics about horror films Mm -hmm. getting ready i've been looking up trivia it's been so much fun like fully submerged in horror it's great yeah i would recommend that to people just like like don't even just like oh okay i'm gonna watch a horror film get involved get obsessed Like, I know people think making Halloween your personality is cringy, but I don't give a fuck. Like, no, it's, it's so much fun. fun. I love it. And I think everyone should love it. And I think everyone should try it out for a little bit because mm-hmm. it's character building. It is. It is. <laughs> so if you enjoyed this episode or you enjoyed any of the others, please leave a like, subscribe. It helps us out a lot. Let us know on socials what you thought of everything. Any horror films you think we've missed over this week that you'd like us to talk about in the future because we've said a million times, we're not a horror podcast but we very much enjoy horror. So yes. yeah, let us know and follow mm-hmm. us on everything. We're in all the usual spots. And I'm kind of sad this is coming to an end, but I I've know. had a brilliant time. <laughs> yeah. And if you have nothing else to do after this episode for Halloween, our Instagram and Twitter are just full of recommendations. So many. So go ahead. It'll keep you going till next Halloween. <laughs> we'll be back again. We'll be back next month, but we'll be back again next Halloween. <laughs> So yeah, that's it from us today. I really hope you enjoyed and bye. Bye.